All right, I see that folks are going to continue to join us. I'm excited uh, for you all to be here. My name is Aaron Borgeson. I'm an admissions officer here at Cal Poly. My pronouns are he, him, and I'm a two-time graduate of Cal Poly. I originally came, like many of you, from um, my to Cal Poly as an undergraduate student. My major was political science, and I'm excited to be joined by current Cal Poly students here to really showcase everything Cal Poly over the next hour. We have a number of students that are here to uh, showcase their experience, go through some of the questions that we often get here at Cal Poly about the Cal Poly journey here in San Luis Obispo. Our suite of students and the, the collection of panelists here today um, represent so many different identities coming from high school, coming from as transfers, uh, majors represented from engineering to, bio, uh, to college of science and mathematics and anywhere between. So here at Cal Poly, we have 64 different majors. We are here to answer your questions and hear from our student panelists. So without further ado, I'm gonna run down some housekeeping items. The chat functionality that you see down below is one option uh, to ask our, uh, is, is actually an option, um, uh, is not an option tonight. The chat functionality is uh, just for us to push out some really important information. So we're gonna push out um, a couple of different things throughout the presentation here through the chat, but your place to ask us questions and ask our panelists questions is gonna be that Q&A functionality. Throw in the Q&A functionality, any questions that you have here today, and we'll, we'll hopefully get to your question. I can't promise that we'll get to all questions here tonight, uh, but make sure uh, you utilize that Q&A functionality to ask our panelists any questions. We have a suite of questions already prepared, and we even had a chance to ask you, the audience, uh, on Instagram, our Cal Poly Admissions Instagram account this past week. Definitely give it a follow. Got some really great tips. Uh, what questions you want us to, an to answer here today. So we even uh, hopefully have time to get to some of those questions. And without further ado, we're excited to kick off today, tonight at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, the first of many, many sessions to come. We're going to be here every 6 p.m., every Tuesday at 6 p.m. over the next couple of weeks but in, from now through November 16th showcasing our six different colleges. And we're also gonna have a chance to wrap it up to talk more about student resources and academic support here on November 16th. So just fun fact, next week, it's gonna be uh, the College of Engineering and the College of Liberal Arts. And then I gotta, I gotta say, stay to the end tonight. We're gonna have a cool little opportunity for you to even uh, earn a Cal Poly swag bag uh, here this fall. So stay to the end and without further ado, we're going to shift gears and uh, introduce our MC for the evening. Uh, take it away. All righty. Thank you so much, Aaron, for that awesome introduction. I am Darren Berger, and I will be your MC for today. I'm super excited for this next hour. We're going to talk about so many great Cal Poly facts and get to know some of the students that are going along with it. So to introduce myself, I'm Darren Berger. My pronouns are she, her. I'm from Simi Valley, California, Ventura County area. Um, I am actually a fifth year here at Cal Poly, completing my master's in business administration. And a really fun fact about me is that I'm double jointed in my fingers and I'm so excited to answer some really awesome questions with you all today. Next, I'm going to kick it off to Clinton to talk about himself. Hi everyone, my name is Clinton. I use pronouns he, him, his. Um, and I'm originally from San Diego, California. So hopefully we got some uh, San Diegans or at least some SoCal people uh, in our webinar today. I'm a fourth year architecture major um, with a theater arts minor. And some things I like to do um, here in slow are, you know, surfing. Um, I'm also, I was also a wow leader. Um, I like to go on some great hikes that we have in the area. And right now I'm on an intramural softball team, um, division three, but we're, we're doing really good. We're three and oh, um, so that's just another fun thing you could do here on campus. So I'll pass it to Madison. Hi. Uh, my name is Madison Lewandowski. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and um, I'm a senior, also a transfer student at Cal Poly. I'm majoring in business administration with a concentration in marketing. And something that I'm really passionate about is actually two things are fit fitness and entrepreneurship. And I'm actually working on a fitness startup um, that started through Cal Poly and um, is using a lot of Cal Poly's resources. 
Hi everyone, my name is Kaylee. I use she, her pronouns. I am a second year transfer student and originally from Salinas, California. Uh, my major was initially math and I recently transferred my major to liberal studies. And I'm also a student assistant at the transfer center. Hi. Uh, my name is Evelyn Chavez. My pronouns are she, they. I'm originally from Los Banos. Uh, currently, my family's in Modesto, so anywhere in the Central Valley, basically. I am a fifth year industrial engineering student. I'm actually um, in my last year, so I'm starting my senior project soon. Uh, and I love watching anime. My favorite anime right now is My Hero Academia, and I love playing Minecraft. <laughs> Hey y'all, I'm Kiana. I'm a fourth year child development major. Um, I'm the Cal Poly softball team. That's not nearly as cool as Clinton's D3 uh, intramural softball, um, but that's all right. I'm from Rancho Mirada, California, about half an hour from Sacramento. Um, and a fun fact about me is that I danced hula from the age four to nine. Hi everyone, my name is Tess Lori. I use she, her, hers pronouns. I'm a fourth year liberal arts and engineering studies major with minors in religious studies and dance from Alpine, California, which is kind of near San Diego. Um, I'm serving as student body president this year, which is really exciting, but when I'm not doing that, I also work at the library and we're called Librats, which is kind of a funny name, but basically I'm a research um, assistant and it's a really fun job and I love interacting with students in the library. It's one of my favorite places to be on campus. Happy to be here with you all tonight. Hi everyone, my name is Kay Nurge. My pronouns are she, her, and I am a third year bio major concentrating in cell and molecular biology with a minor in bioinformatics. I'm from Los Altos, California. Um, and for those of you who don't know who bioinformatics is, it's kind of a mixture between biology and computer science. Um, so with that, I am the president of the biotech club here on campus. Hi guys, my name is Mason Davis. Um, pronouns are he and him. I'm an agricultural and environmental plant science major. Um, and I'm on like my fifth year victory lap. I'm concentrating in fruit and crop science. I'm from uh, a tiny town right outside of Chico, California. And something I like to do is I like going to the beach, hanging out with friends. And then um, I was also uh, lucky enough to be part of the football team at Cup Poly. So that, that takes up quite a bit of time. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Juan. Uh, I use he, him pronouns. Um, I'm from the LA area and originally from Peru, uh, which is in South America. I'm a third, uh, third year transfer, um, concent concentrated mechatronics um, and my major is mechanical engineering. Uh, some things that I like to do is swimming, um, biking and cooking. I currently don't bike just because my bike's tire got flat uh, recently, so I need to repair it. <laughs> And I'm happy to be here. All righty, thank you so much everyone for introducing yourselves. I hope you got a good glimpse into who is going to be answering this few rounds of questions that we have to offer. So now we're just gonna dive right into our Q&A section. The first being, what is an example of learn by doing you have done inside the classroom? What about outside of the classroom in clubs, internships, or other organizations? I'm gonna first pass this question off to Kay. Yeah, so I would say my favorite example of learn by doing um, that I've experienced in my time at Cal Poly has been um, the COVID lab that I worked in. So for those of you who don't know, Cal Poly set up a COVID screening lab um, this past year to screen all of our students who had to go through a testing program. Um, and the lab was run by a lot of students and a couple of professors. And I was lucky enough to be able to work in that lab. Um, and as a bioinformatics student, somebody who's passionate about coding and bio and the cross-section between them, I was able to work on coding the machines that did the testing for the samples. Um, so it was re a really, really cool experience to be able to see um, our students start off and like give us the samples and then watch them through the entire process of getting processed um, all the way to giving people their results. Um, something that I would say that I did outside of the classroom 
um, would probably be something that I did over this past summer, um, which is the FROST program. So the FROST program is a program designed for students um, who want to do research over the summer with a professor. So I approached a professor that I really liked, really enjoyed taking a class with, and I asked him if there was a possibility of me joining his research. Um, he does research in proteins and protein purification. Um, and I thought that that was super interesting to me. And luckily he said that he would love me to help. So this past summer I hopped on board his research lab and I got paid to do research in his lab, learning about proteins and I got to purify my own protein. Um, so it was honestly a really amazing experience. I not only got to learn more about different aspects of my major, but I also got to grow really, really close to the professor that I was working with. Um, and I'm sure that that connection will continue to go further because I am continuing to work with him um, during the school year. Thank you so much, Kay, for that answer. So great to hear inside and outside opportunities of Learn By Doing. Um, Evelyn, do you have anything else to add or any experiences you'd like to share? Yeah. Um... Before I was industrial engineering, uh, I used to be mechanical engineering for my first three years, and then I switched over. But when I was a mechanical engineering student in my philosophy design class, we created a portable escape room. So uh, I actually got to use um, one of the old desks from the campus, and we got to basically tear it apart. And, and we got to put in uh, elements of an escape room. So like figuring out what types of puzzles would be needed. Um, we used a lot of creative thinking and um, outside resources in order to make the escape room. Uh, turned out really to be really effective. So uh, loved that project. Um, and then outside of the classroom, uh, I'm currently the vice president of diversity, equity, and inclusion at the Society of Women Engineers on campus. But before that, I was an outreach officer for the past two years. So been an officer for three years. Um, uh, I got to work with a lot of students uh, with hands-on activities. So we got to go to local elementary and middle schools where we got to do like um, parachutes or we learned about uh, different types of uh, like engineering majors and then did activities with the kids with it. Uh, and that was probably one of the most inspiring times and um, you get to learn a lot about not just your own major, but also about others. Thank you so much, Evelyn. That's some really great in the class experience and outside the class experience. Getting involved with clubs is so important and building escape rooms in your classes just sounds ex so exciting. So really awesome to hear from you too. Juan, do you have anything else you'd like to offer about Learn By Doing experiences at Cal Poly? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, so I'm in the mechanical engineering department and in many of my classes we have design projects and labs and one of the most recent ones that I've done and I really enjoy was designing the transmission of an electric car. So we chose the motor based on performance parameters and designed the gearbox, the shafts uh, and all the mechanical components based on strength and stiffness which you learn in the class. And it was a long process but I thought it was pretty cool towards the end when I, we got to see the results and also model it in a computer. And outside of the classroom, I'm currently working on a research project with a professor in which I'm designing a prototype of a social robot that is aimed to help children with reading practice. And my main tasks for that is designing the code and some of the actual physical design, um, how the robot is gonna look like. And we eventually want to redesign it so that it can be better suited for within practice for children who have um, speech impairments. So in that research project, um, I'm getting paid for that. So I'm really grateful because that's a great help um, to pay for my expenses while I'm also studying. And yeah, that's, uh, that's about it um, regarding my experience as a classroom. Thank you so much, Juan. That is such great experience and advice to give out to everyone. So great to hear from three different types of perspectives of students, um, because no matter what you're interested in, you can find some learn by doing really great opportunity here at Cal Poly. Diving into our next question, I'm going to be asking, how did you learn about and get involved in different clubs and organizations? How did you get connected to internships, jobs, community service, and other opportunities? Tess, do you want to start us off? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think with clubs and organizations, the really cool thing is as a Cal Poly student, you usually participate in week of welcome or wow, it's like, it's a pretty big thing. Um, and it's our orientation program. And a part of that program is going to a giant club fair that has, I mean, almost every single club and organization on campus, there's just hundreds of booths. And so you have a lot of hours to walk around and interact with folks and ask questions. And I remember doing that as a first year. And that's how I found out about a lot of the clubs I went to as a first year was through the club fair. In terms of internships and jobs, um, and I think somebody had actually brought this up in the Q&A, but your departments definitely have networks. So um, related to your majors. And so, for example, my department in liberal arts and engineering studies constantly sends out opportunities for us to connect and network with folks in industry um, or information sessions. And I actually went to one and ended up getting um, an interview and a job offer through Teach for America. So it's definitely useful to use the networks that are provided to you by friends or professors or folks in your department, because a lot of times that can be a lot easier than just like applying blindly to jobs and internships through different platforms online. Thank you so much, Tess, for that advice. And congratulations, Teaching for America is such an awesome organization. I know some people who also did that from Cal Poly, so super great advice as well. Clinton, do you have anything else to add on to this question? Sure, yeah, um, for clubs and organizations, I'd say look into um, <clears throat> where you're living. So whether you're in the residence halls or in the apartments, there's a ton of fires up there and kind of some programming going on for clubs, organizations, and um, you know other ways to kind of meet people within your building um, through the resident advisors and all the programs that they host there. Um, so that's where I met a lot of people um, and I'm good friends with today. For the internships, I agree with Tess. Um, the departments really send out a lot of emails for it. Um, I also got an internship through my uh, minor um, uh, department. So we were actually able to do uh, an escape room this past summer uh, and build that out. So that was a great opportunity that I wouldn't have been able to find if, if it wasn't for uh, Cal Poly. So look into that and always keep an eye out um, in those departmental emails because there's a ton of great information and opportunities there for everyone. Thank you so much, Clinton. Wow, there are so many opportunities for escape rooms. It's mind boggling as an undergraduate. It sounds like so much fun. Uh, definitely got into the wrong field. Um, but up next, we're gonna go into our third question, which is how have you found a community at Cal Poly? Kiana, do you wanna start us off? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, as I said before, I'm a part of the Cal Poly softball team. So obviously there's athletics is kind of a given. Um, I've really found community like within my team, obviously, because they're a lot like my sisters, but also within the Mott gym in general through athletics, um, meeting other teams. Um, I know the class, two classes below me was able to live in an all athletic storm and they're really close with other athletes as well. Um, but also the last two years I've been with the student diversity and belonging programs. Um, specifically, I work for the Black Academic Excellence Center as a student assistant. And um, there's so many people that I would have never met, especially within the Black community, that I was just craving the first two years. And I'm so glad that I was able to meet these folks. And um, but yeah, the community is growing um, within the Black community at Cal Poly. And um, I'm just so grateful for meeting these folks and leaning on them as a resource and as friends and an outlet for the Black community. Thank you so much, Kiana, for that answer and being so vulnerable with everyone. It's so great that you were able to find a community, maybe not in your first or second year exactly, but later on in life too, or later on in your Cal Poly journey as well. Um, up next, Kaylee, do you have anything else you'd like to offer about how you found your community at Cal Poly? Yeah, I would love to. Um, so like Kiana mentioned, um, getting involved on campus is really a great way to find community. Um, so I also work on campus. I'm a student assistant at the Transfer Center. And as a transfer student, um, coming into a whole university without knowing anyone can be pretty daunting. Um, so if there's any transfers in the crowd today, uh, make sure to get involved and find that sort of community. Now that we have the Transfer Center, there's already a set community there for you. But other jobs such as working in downtown 
dining or in ASI at the Rec Sen. Um, those are other places to meet people that you have obviously have similar interests. Um, another reason or another way uh, that other people mention is through research. So I was also a part of uh, Frost Research and also the Beacon Research Program uh, that was focused towards underrepresented students. So people who share similar identities with me. Uh, so that was a great way to meet people. Um, and then another thing is through orientation. So as Tess mentioned, uh, Week of Welcome is a great way to meet a lot of people. Um, I actually was a core uh, member as well as, a core, as well as a core leader. And so that's uh, an orientation program geared towards students of color, uh, first generation students. Um, so being around that sort of community before uh, being in the classroom and starting on campus was, um, it was really helpful in the transition. Um, so yeah, just make sure to find uh, people who have similar interests or identities as, as you, and that's a great place to start. Thank you so much. That was awesome advice as well. Uh, it's always like I say, um, college is more than about education. It's about the people you make and the community that you form here. So definitely really great perspectives to have within Cal Poly. Uh, moving on to our next question. How did you work through the transition to college and life in San Luis Obispo? Mason, do you want to start us off? Yeah, let's do it. Um, something that really helped me when I first got here was uh, I, I had a couple friends that I knew from back home that were older. And so I would just try to go to the beach with them, go on hikes with them, incorporate myself. But even if you don't know um, anyone per se, and you're just, you're coming in, don't know much about Cal Poly, the, I will say this university does a really good job at grouping you together and giving you um, opportunities to meet a lot of new friends. And it seems pretty scary when you're a freshman to just go up, but I mean, I promise you it's worth just like going up to some random person in your dorm or in your wow group and be like, hey, you want to go to the beach and hang out for the day or um, whatnot. And that's uh, that's really helpful. You find friends quick. And then also another thing that helped me was joining clubs. Some of the best advice I got as an incoming freshman was to just join as many possible clubs as I could, even if it didn't meet my interests, because the worst, uh, the worst possible case scenario is you get a free dinner every month for for each club normally, and so that's pretty that's pretty cool as a freshman. Awesome, thank you so much, Mason. That's actually so true. Uh, the business college they always have free food. Uh, I've joined a million clubs because I get urbane so often. So definitely some really great advice um, from Mason. Uh, moving on to Madison, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Yeah. Um... I just kind of to second what Mason said, I actually am a transfer student. So when I came here, I already kind of felt a little behind because, you know, I, I only had two more years left of school while people were, were already in here for two years. And so I really made it an effort to get involved and meet as many people as possible. And I came and I didn't know really anyone. Um, and so I went to the club showcase, I think in like the first week at Cal Poly. And I signed up for as many clubs as I could, probably like 10 to 15 clubs. And I just went to them to see which one stuck. And I ended up finding a club that I really liked. I loved the um, Cal Poly Entrepreneurs Club. They had free pizza every week. It was free, it was awesome. And um, I met a lot of really, really cool people through that club that I'm still friends with today. Also, I was presented with a lot of opportunities where I was able to meet more people and just do a lot of really awesome things at Cal Poly and trying to get help starting my dream business and things like that. So definitely put yourself out there, try and find a club and people that you click with. Um, and yeah, that, that's, I guess what I would say. Awesome, thank you so much, Madison. Moving on to our next question, um, share a story with the group where a faculty or staff member has made a difference in your time here at Cal Poly. I'm gonna pass it off to you, Tess, first. Yeah, so in terms of staff members within student government, we have a lot of full-time staff members who I work with on a daily basis. And I think coming out of high school and being in college, like Cal Poly has a lot of folks who are really, really high achievers. And sometimes that can cause a lot of stress in students' lives, um, if we're just being honest. And um, I'm also somebody who just has like very high expectations for myself. And so sometimes they just get really anxious and 
one time, one of my pro staff, my professional staff members noticed I was having a bad day. She like called me into her office and she's like, tell me what's happening. Like for real, like what's happening. And um, I just started crying in her office, which kind of sounds sad, but it was so nice that she, you know, noticed something was up with me and she ended up helping me move some stuff around and clear time, just like focus on my mental health and well-being. And that was kind of one of the first times where I was like, wow, like people here on this campus actually really care about me. They care about how I'm doing. They care about my well-being. Um, and it was just really encouraging to know that we do have faculty and staff on campus who really care about you as humans. I think my high school teachers would always say things <laughs> to me in high school, like, when you get to college, like your professors are going to be so mean or they're going to be so hard on you. And um, some professors definitely can. But I think the most encouraging thing about this campus is so many people here want to help you and want to prioritize your well-being and want to see you succeed. Um, and they'll notice and reach out. And if they don't and you are feeling honest enough to be able to reach out to them, a lot of times they're always willing to grant extensions or help with accommodations and just make sure that you are doing well as a human. So I really do think we have absolutely wonderful faculty and staff members on this campus and they they very much care about you. So that's kind of like my happy sad story. <laughs> Thank you so much Tess for being so vulnerable and sharing that story. Sometimes it's crazy how someone can just ask how you are and then all of a sudden it changes your entire emotional state. So thank you so much for sharing that. Definitely, I've had multiple stories along the same lines. <laughs> um, moving on to Juan, do you have anything else you'd like to add about a story or two? Yeah, um, so the professor I'm currently doing research with uh, is also my mentor. Uh, I ended up working for him after getting accepted into a research mentorship program um, that is available here at Cal Poly every year. And uh, since then, he's been a great help for me in gaining, um, I guess, perspective and insight with regards to the paths that I can take with my major. I'm a first generation student, so coming uh, from community college and also being here at Capoli uh, my first quarter, um, I felt like I didn't know what to do with the classes that I was taking. So in part by doing research with this mentor, I realized that I really like working on robotics, which is a topic that um, the research is in. Uh, so I'm also thinking about applying to grad school for that. So I really feel confident about my future goals in regards to my major, thanks to um, my mentor's guidance and overall advice. And I think this, this wouldn't have been possible if I didn't, um, I guess, apply, because sometimes, uh, you feel that the application process, you know, is either long or you feel like you wouldn't get accepted because at first I thought I wasn't gonna get accepted, but I did. And I really uh, don't regret that choice because it's changed my um, perspective with regards to my future. Thank you so much, Juan. I think that's a feeling that we can all somewhat relate to of not being able to or just not thinking that we could possibly get in. So not even putting ourselves out there, but definitely making that decision has benefited you and is something that I am also very grateful for. So thank you so much for sharing your story. Switching gears a little bit, we're going to move on to our next question. Put yourself in the shoes of our prospective students here today, panel. What advice would you have? Kaylee, do you want to start us off? Um, Kiana, do you want to start us off? Totally. Um, I think in reality, coming to college is all about starting fresh. And um, I think an advice is just be your true and authentic self. Um, we're also so young in our 18 to like 22, 23 years old. So we're still finding ourselves. So allow yourself to be vulnerable and uh, know all the resources that you have on campus and that you are not alone and that we are all here with you. Um, also, just go after it. Get out there. Uh, join those clubs. Uh, join the SDAB programs. There's so many places um, that you will belong on campus and especially take advantage of the week of welcome. I've met so many of my non-athletic friends through there and it, um, yeah, it really meant a lot to me. Thank you so much, Kiana, for that. Kay, do you have anything else to add? 
Yeah, um, I want to say that once you get to college, um, a lot of people think it's very hit or miss whether you find friends or and whether you fit into the specific college that you've chosen. Um, and a lot of people tend to get freaked out if they think that they're not immediately finding friends um, and not immediately finding their personal like group of people that they're set with for the rest of their four years. Um, but I want to kind of get rid of that stigma and say that it is totally okay for you to experiment with friend groups and try new things and try clubs that you've never thought that you would be interested in um, and just to meet new people because a lot of friendships that you'll start with um, at the beginning of freshman year won't be with you when you graduate in four years. Um, and there will be a lot of really, really cool friends that you'll develop from different clubs that you've joined just like on a whim um, that you never saw yourself having. Um, so really come into college with an open mind, be willing to try anything, be willing to change your major if that's not something that you were ever thinking about doing um just to be able to get the full college experience because when else are you going to be able to live as a young person um exploring the world um with a support system at your back the entire way thank you so much Kate for that Evelyn do you have anything else to add as well I definitely um I still remember the day that all of the families were in the gym and we were all just seeing like the professors go up and talking about like the college of engineering or the uh, different opportunities there are. And it just, it passed by so fast. Um, just recently I did the exact same thing where uh, instead this time I was up on the stage and I was looking out to all of the students and I still pointed out like, this is exactly where I was sitting. Um, I still remember that new feeling that you have. Uh, you're probably all like scared or uh, worried, like what decision am I making? Like, how am I gonna get here? Uh, what's this going to be like? And that fear is totally understandable. Uh, you get to face that every day. And I'm very proud of all of you for making these types of decisions because you are all so fortunate. Um, to have these opportunities and just know that you are not by yourself. You are totally going to be okay. Uh, it always ends up being okay. Uh, when you come to Cal Poly, you have so many opportunities that are available to you, so many services, so many people here for you. Uh, pretty sure all of us on, these, on this panel can say that we've been in a place where we were fearful and there was someone there to help us out. Um, so just know that you're not alone and you will be okay. I completely trust all of your judgment um, for you even uh, having all of these questions of like, uh, should I go into these like hard classes? Should I uh, be, you know, trying to do this or do this? Like you're all incredibly intelligent and you will be able to make the judgments that you need in order for you to grow and in order for you to progress into college. So I promise you that you will all be fine. Thank you so much, Evelyn, for your reassurance and just being so articulate with your thoughts as well. We're gonna switch gears again and dive into our next topic. What is one thing at Cal Poly that you think every student should take advantage of? Oh, um, yes. Um, and we will start this question off with um, Evelyn, go for it. Um, could you show the, the question again? Yeah, it is. What is one thing at Cal Poly that you think every student should take advantage of? Um, Again, we have so many opportunities for students to be able to like understand what a resume is. Um, like my my parents never uh, had like a four year college education. Uh, I'm first generation, um, so being here, I got to learn about how to do an interview. Um, how often should I be emailing people? Uh, what is an email signature? Uh, I didn't really know that until I got here. Uh, so uh, there are career services, there are uh, 
clubs uh, that host sessions. Um, so I can personally say like, so we uh, host like uh, career fair workshop workshops. So if you're like, uh, I have my resume, I'm in front of this industry member, what am I gonna do? Uh, they help you with that process. Um, I know teachers here have plenty of industry industry experience uh so definitely like be talking to your professors go into office hours and just say like hey i have no clue what i'm doing and they will be totally understandable they'll be like yes uh this is this is what i did this is the experience i had so just have that open communication um be checking your email uh we always are sending out emails like here Come, come to this session, let us help you out. Uh, so just taking that extra step forward of going to those sessions, going to those workshops, signing up for career fairs, even in your first year. Um, it, even though some of you might not get an internship in your first year, the experience is so important for later on when things do get more serious. So uh, just maintain your communication uh, and take on those opportunities that are just always there. Awesome, thank you so much, Evelyn, for that response. Does anybody else on the panel have anything else to add? Yeah, um, I can talk about the professors at Cal Poly. Um, I honestly think that the professors at Cal Poly are genuinely so, so amazing. Um, in specific, I want to talk about the professor that I worked with while I worked in the COVID lab, Dr. Martinez. Um, if he isn't, a, isn't an example of what Cal Poly professors um, strive for and strive to help their students achieve, then I don't know what else is. Um, because he um, was helping. So we had a student who was working in the COVID lab who um, was older and she had a daughter and she was working part time while she was also taking classes um, and taking care of her daughter. And she was set to graduate at the end of last year. Um, and she, since she had a daughter, didn't want to relocate to find a job. And there aren't many biotech companies in this low area. Um, there is just about, I think, one in Santa Maria and Dr. Martinez knew that this student was applying to work at um, the company in Santa Maria. And he also knew that one um, of the company's representatives was coming in to tour our COVID lab. Um, and so knowing those two things, he kind of set her up um, and had her give them the tour just so that she could kind of get in their good graces. Um, and she ended up getting the job, not having to relocate um, and all thanks to Dr. Martinez. So so I honestly think that our professors are so, so amazing and they care so much for our students. They aren't just focused on their research and doing whatever they need to do to, to succeed. They do care about our students um, and they want to see you succeed as well. So if you reach out to your professors and make those connections with your professors, find people who are interested in doing what you're doing, I guarantee that you'll find success in some way. Thank you so much, Kay, for that. Juan, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Um, yeah, I would say that um, you should all take advantage of, I mean, my son's generic, but um, application opportunities, because even if you feel that you are not 100% uh, qualified for a position, it might just be the case that there's not enough applicants, so, and they, they might give you some consideration. And, and sometimes some professors, so in general, many positions, uh, besides the qualifications, they also look for, you know, enthusiasm or, you know, that you're motivated and or encouraged to learn. So I feel like uh, not many people do that. So that's why they meet some opportunities they could they could take advantage of. Also, I would say um, getting involved in clubs. Um, you're not, I mean, many clubs, I don't think they um, do require you to, you know, once you go to stay. So I would suggest to try as many clubs as you uh, want, and maybe you'll find one that best suits your interests. And you can learn a lot from that, um, be it on the academic side or just on the social side to make friends. Thank you so much, Juan. Up next, Mason, would you like anything else to add to this question? Yeah, so 100%, um, I think uh, the, the top thing to take advantage of at Cal Poly is the career fairs. We have like really good career fairs, um, especially within your major and department. 
Um, they get super specific and companies are lining up out the door to come get a college student or to get a Cal Poly student on the um, on their payroll. And especially like in the ag department for me, we run a huge um, agriculture career fair called Ag Showcase. And that's where I landed my job for after college. I All of my background and um, history have been with uh, tree nuts and rice, stuff like that. And then I ended up getting some random job with strawberries that I didn't even think I was qualified for, but they put, uh, these companies put a lot of faith in Cal Poly and the degree is worth way more than you could ever imagine just because of the learn by doing factor. And these classes prepare you so well for a job outside of school that there, no, no other school can really compare to Cal Poly in that factor. Thank you so much, Mason, and congratulations on your job offer. That is so exciting to hear. Up next is Madison. Would you like to offer anything about what one student should take advantage of at their time here at Cal Poly? Yeah, um, for me, and I think in, a, in all of the different um, colleges at Cal Poly, there's opportunities and competitions that um, I, I assume each um, college has, but I can speak for the, business, the College of Business um, there's an elevator pitch competition. There is something called Startup Weekend where you have to basically make a business in 54 hours and pitch it in front of a bunch of people. There's Innovation Quest, which is another business competition. And they're literally giving out thousands of dollars. And that's things like that. I assume all the colleges also do similar things. I think there's hackathons and things like that. Um, it's a great way to get yourself out there to meet cool people and to have an awesome experience that you will learn a lot from. I actually remember at my start of weekend, I ended up pitching um, and I did so terribly, but I look back on that and I think of how much I've improved and how much I've learned from it. So they're great resources and great opportunities in every college. Thank you so much, Madison. Up next, Kiana, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, I really um, agree with Mason as well for like career fairs. I know that my roommate has gotten so many job opportunities um, through career fairs, but also like I th believe most majors have mandatory um, internships and I'm currently in my first quarter of internships and I really enjoy it to so take advantage of like the fact that you have to do it because it's mandatory and it's towards your degree, but also like take it all in and it might even help you in the future to get like a job or um, getting into grad school or things like that. Um, I originally started my internship with Praise, which is ABA therapy, and then realized that it wasn't for me. Um, and then I started working for the Black Academic Excellence Center and really found purpose in what I was doing and using my child development and psych um, abilities to um, allow the base program to grow. So really take advantage of the internships that you have to do. Awesome. Thank you so much. Up next, Tess, would you like to add anything on to this question? Yeah, I think there's a lot of resources on campus. I would like highly suggest students take advantage of while they're at Cal Poly, um, specifically campus health and well-being. I don't think I realized how many services were offered through campus health and well-being until like towards the end of my first year. You can get discounted like medicine. You can get health services. They do free flu shots. We do vaccinations on camp campus. We do testing. There's a food pantry where you can get access to free food. We have counseling services. Um, so I think just like being aware and, and going to the random resource fairs they have and making sure you know it's available for you on campus because um, college is expensive and you pay a lot to go to college. And when you pay your tuition and fees, there's a lot of like very, very free services and things provided to you. And so um, for as much as you can like kind of do that investigating and pay attention during session presentations at the beginning and really figure out like what do those free or discounted resources look like and take advantage of those things. Um, it's just a really great way to make sure you have what you need in college and then also like 
save money. Like if you don't need to go spend $12 on NyQuil and you can get it for like four, like you just saved eight bucks, you know, and then you can, you know, it's good. I don't know. There's so many resources. That's my biggest thing I would say to take advantage of. Thanks, Tess. That's an awesome reminder to definitely look into that as you come to Cal Poly or visit the campus. Lastly, Clinton, would you like to add anything else to this question of is there anything um, you should take advantage of at your time here at Cal Poly? Yeah, I would take advantage of just the people around you and the community that you're a part of, um, whether that's in the residence halls or the apartments. Um, the resident advisors host a lot of great events for you to meet students within your building, um, but also maybe connect with the college that you're a part of, maybe some interests that you may have. Um, so do that. And another great tip that I have, um, that I really try to push on all the first years that are coming in or even some of our uh, transfer students is if you're in your room, just hanging out, just leave your door open maybe for the first couple of weeks and someone will come by and pop their head in or maybe you'll say hi to someone as well. But really put yourself out there for the first couple of weeks and try to meet as many people as you can because I made some really um, nice like long-term friends um, just from doing things like that and also through WOW. So everyone's in the same boat. Don't worry if you're being too pushy or um, something like that because we all kind of want to meet people and we're all a little scared to do so coming out of high school and entering college. Thank you so much, Clinton, for that response. We're gonna dive into our last question of today, and it is, why did you choose Cal Poly and why have you stayed? We're gonna start off with Madison. Yeah, um, so I chose Cal Poly. I think I was initially drawn to it because of the learn by doing approach. Um, but when I first toured the campus, I noticed how nice the people were and I grew up in Santa Barbara and people aren't really not nice in Santa Barbara, but I just noticed that a lot of people, you could ask anyone for directions. I'm very directionally challenged and I remember asking so many people where to go, where my classes are and people are so nice. Everyone's open to helping you and everyone wants to make friends. So that was one thing that really stood out to me. Um, and the other thing is the learn by doing approach, which in my opinion, I, I think the best way of learning is to try something and fail at it and learn from your failures. And Cal Poly really just encourages you to put yourself out there, try something new and to truly learn by doing. Awesome, thank you so much for that. Up next, Clinton, do you have anything else you'd like to add onto this question? Yeah, for me personally, um, there's not too many architecture schools uh, in California. That's kind of where I wanted to stay. Um, but there's also not as many architecture schools that are as great as Cal Poly for the undergrad um, student. So that's really why I chose to come here, um, but also lo the location. Um, I only visited once during my high school years and I kind of knew this was the place for me not really in love with Los Angeles or San Francisco, didn't really want the big city vibe and kind of wanted that college town experience, which you totally get here. Um, it was like ranked one of the number one college towns in the nation a couple years ago because we do have a great kind of tight knit community within SLO, um, but also at Cal Poly. So I totally agree with Madison. Um, the people here are really great and welcoming and everyone's, you know, pretty intelligent, um, but it's not combative in any way. It's, it's more collaborative um, kind of through that learn by doing approach as well. Great, thank you so much, Clinton. Tess, moving on to you about this question. Yeah, so initially um, why I chose Cal Poly, I think I have a family member who went here who just like raved and raved and raved that it was wonderful. But um, I also agree folks here are really, really nice and kind and when I was touring everyone just seemed really happy which was very different from a lot of the other colleges I was touring and students seemed like really stressed and at poly like people were smiling and hanging out on the lawn and playing frisbee and there were dogs and um, it was just like a very different vibe than I had experienced at a lot of other colleges um, being super honest, my first year, I really struggled to like, kind of like find home and community and like called home a lot and was convinced that I was going to transfer to a different school. But in terms of what kind of was that deciding factor and 
staying was actually finding that community and finding folks who also felt like there were areas for our campus to improve. And I think that's one of the coolest things is like, I really found my home in like working to make this campus and this place better for students. So hopefully other students in the future can, you know, really find a place to, to feel at home and feel comfortable and um, feel safe here. And so I think that's the great thing is once you find your people and it doesn't always happen all the time, it can take a while sometimes, but the, the people here were definitely my reason to stay. They, they made me feel like valued and um, included and wanted here. And so the people are the best part about this campus in my opinion. Thank you so much, Tess, for that vulnerability and just being so honest with um, your experiences. And Cal Poly people are great, so it's great to hear it as well. Um, up next for this question, Kiana, do you have anything else you'd like to add? I would love to add. Um, <clears throat> my experience is a little bit different considering I'm an athlete and before they changed the rule for juniors to be able to commit, anyone of any age could commit to come here for athletics. Um, I ended up committing <laughs> quite early. Um, I think I was 15 when I realized I was going to come to Cal Poly to play softball. Um, so yeah, I came here mostly because they could financially support me the best. Um, but also I have all female staff, which is really helpful um, when you're playing an all female sport. Um, along with the community, I love that it's like a college town. Um, and they asked me if I'd like to beach your mountains and I totally picked um, I think I picked beach and they're like, well, that's fine. Cause we have both, which I thought was really cool. Um, the reason why I stayed is a little bit different from everyone else's. There's like this weird stigma about DEI and whatnot. And I really want to stay here for my black brothers and sisters to finally get us a black therapist on campus. And um, hopefully I'll get into the grad program here, but um, yeah, I'm wanting to a really make change on campus for DEI and I'm excited because I know it's coming soon and yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kiana. And then last up for this question, Mason, um, if you would like to answer this. Yeah, so um, the main reason why I chose Cal Poly was uh, it has to be the learn by doing aspect. Um, I, I kind of decided I wanted to go to Cal Poly from a really young age because I had some older cousins and relatives that went here and just loved the area. Um, and uh, perfect area, beaches, mountains, you name it. Um, and with my major, with the ag major, part of the learn by doing factor is that I would rarely ever study out a textbook. Our, our textbook in class was we would go out outside of the classroom out back and we have orchards and farms and science labs and everything and anything you could ever imagine out here. And so they were literally just training us to do a job in a company if, of our interests in the future. And that was awesome because I'm not the type of person that can just sit down for, other, for hours, read a textbook and bam, get all the information. I have to actually be out in the field and go through the steps and go through the process and see what it um what certain things look like in real life and that that's the reason why i stayed i mean the professors are so personable and everything is modeled to what you want to do and how to get you there and cal poly gives you every every resource you could have ever hoped for mason that is an awesome answer and i think that is such an a testament to your cal poly experience and the cal poly uh, motto of learn by doing. So thank you so much to our panelists here today. Uh, we're going to transition into some next steps and some exciting ways to further connect with Cal Poly. I just want to really uh, want to thank each panelist. Go ahead and throw in your chat in the chat uh, your thanks and gratitude uh, to each one of our student panelists here today. There are two things that I want to really reiterate, and that is when you come to Cal Poly by declaring your major on the application, we're going to really be able to allow you day one at Cal Poly to hit the ground running in classes in your major, as well as general education classes. So day one, you're, if you're coming in as a first year or transfer student, you're going to have those experiences in your major to, to dive right in 
uh, to these experiences, these learn by doing hands-on experiences, just as Mason was talking about, really those experiences outside the labs and outside the classroom experience for so many of our 60, all for all of our 64 different majors here at Cal Poly. The other thing that I wanna really stress and Tess talked about this is that, uh, that, op, that culture here at Cal Poly of collaboration. Our students, uh, Madison's experiences in entrepreneurship, so many of our students even here talking about the experiences of working outside the classroom with different peers uh, and even inside the classroom where collaboration and that ability to work in groups and hands on a curriculum and uh, apply our learning and real life experiences is really a testament to the Cal Poly experience. So um, the next steps for you to engage with Cal Poly, we have so many different opportunities. Again, next next uh, next Tuesday at this time, the College of Engineering and the College of Liberal Arts are gonna be featured. We have a tour, we even have a virtual student led tour kicking off tomorrow at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, continue to engage with our different application workshops. If you're a current uh, a uh, student that's seeking to apply by November 30th, make sure that you check out our virtual application workshops. Come visit. Uh, we talked a lot about uh, the, the feeling of Cal Poly here in San Luis Obispo. We have some really awesome opportunities on campus um, to come visit. All of our six different colleges are offering tours. Poly Reps, K is a current Poly Rep talking about, and uh, we have our students are, that are walking backwards uh, to move you forward. So uh, last but not least, uh, make sure that you apply on or by November 30th. And um, the last thing I want to mention is uh, you can further connect with us, text us, uh, you can shoot us an email, uh, connect with us, check out our YouTube channel of so many different awesome opportunities to further connect with us. And last but not least, if uh, you want a little swag bag here at, uh, from Cal Poly, <laughs> a really cool opportunity to win a swag bag. Uh, we, we unfortunately can't send every one of uh, you home with a swag bag here today, uh, but let us know, uh, take out your phone, grab that QR code, I know that my colleagues are also uh, able to put in the chat here today. Uh, let us know and we love your feedback. And uh, without further ado, we're gonna close here today with the opportunity to um, uh, win us, uh, some swag from us. And again, we look forward to seeing some of you next week for the College of Engineering and Liberal Arts. Some of you, we might even see you tomorrow on our virtual tour. And we look forward to hosting you here in San Luis Obispo and best of luck with your college endeavors. Thanks so much for our panelists to uh, uh, spend the last e evening, the last hour this evening with us. And thanks so much for your, t your stories and your experiences. Without further ado, thanks so much and have a great night. Bye-bye. Hey there, my name is Rafael. I'm a fourth year journalism transfer student with a minor in Spanish and my pronouns are he, him, his. Thank you for watching the video. Please share any questions or comments you have down below in the comment section. Click here to subscribe and to watch more videos, click here. If you want to sign up for a campus visit, we're offering in-person and virtual options, so check out our website. Link in the description. Thank you for watching.